Hi, this is Justice. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about Rebel 5's Brush Creator. So this guy right here. Now the Brush Creator is the kind of the engine behind all of the brush workings and underneath that, each of the different media, so like the oils and acrylics, the express oils, watercolors, the inks, pencils, the pastels, markers, and airbrush all have different components underneath. They're all like different cars. So they have different engines. That means that even if you put the same settings here on top of it, they're different under the hood. So keep that in mind. Now these settings right here, we're going to go to watercolor and we're going to go down to the liner. I'm going to put a stroke on the screen. Let's go ahead and change it to something we can see a little bit easier and let's increase the opacity. And what I want you to keep in mind is there's a couple different things that affect how the brush looks. So if you're working in the brush creator and you're getting a very different outcome, it could be a couple different things. And in this first video, that's what we're gonna be talking about. So we're not gonna be talking about the brush creator yet, but everything that affects how the brush will look when you're using it. So there's a couple settings over here. So we're gonna drag this panel here on the screen and we're also going to open up visual settings. So let's go ahead and hide the UI and bring these up individually. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at size. If you're working on a brush in the brush creator, I recommend setting the size somewhere in the middle and between 30 and 50%. Now over here in the brush creator, there's a max size. And so if I use this and I bring this over here, this same setting, the same size of 49 is going to give me very different results. So keep that in mind. The opacity settings right here, opacity also is going to make a big difference. I suggest keeping this in between 80 and 100 and preferably around 100 when you're testing out the brush creator because there are opacity settings over here. So here we have this and we bring this over you can see that we have some effect on the opacity based off of the opacity slider here. If we bring this down too much, we might be seeing this, but have the opacity set at 100. That can be confusing, so keep that in mind. Now, if we jump over to the oils and acrylics, if we have the loading right here, we may not be able to see much in way of texture. We bring this over to the right we can start seeing a little bit of that impasto. And let's go ahead and jump into the brush creator. Down here, there's another setting, max loading. Right here, if I bring this over, we can see a big difference now in the impasto. Now, in visual settings, there is also the impasto depth here. So bring this over and you're gonna start noticing a universal change in the impasto depth. So this I recommend keeping in between uh, five and seven or eight, uh, just so you have a, an understanding of, of what's happening without it being uh, something that's already maxed out. You wanna be able to increase it a little bit and decrease it a little bit when you're working with your brushes. So don't put that all the way up to 10 and don't put it all the way down because you won't see anything. All right, now in watercolor, check out the visual settings video to learn more about everything that happens over here, what these things control and what they do. Uh, but for now, that is the main one. Pay attention in pasto depth. Uh, Nano pixel turned on will turn gloss off also. So keep that in mind. All right. Now the last thing that we're going to go into here, uh, and let me point out one more thing here in watercolor, watercolor, your water is going to make a big difference. So let's clear the layer and we'll put this down. Our opacity is low and we, when we're testing, we want this nice and high. Now our water is set at four, which means there's going to be very little diffusion. If we bring this up closer to 50, you're going to see different levels of diffusion based on the amount of water. And also, let's open up the tilt window, if we have tilt on or off. Keep that in mind. If you're wanting to test these and you don't want any of these 
being affected by tilt or by the diffusion. Um, I don't recommend building a brush this way because once you unpause diffusion, it's going to behave very differently. So test it with water. And again, test it with the water level that makes sense for what you're trying to do. If I want just a little bit of diffusion, I usually keep this around three to seven. And that will do just a little bit. It'll blend these little areas where you see the brushes uh, spacing playing a role. Inside the preferences, there's an option for paint, mix, and blend default pressure curves right here. This is where you change the defaults that Revell is reverting back to in the brush creator. This is where you change those paint and mix. Paint, I'll go into detail in the next video on what these do. Uh, threshold, what this does. We'll talk about this in the next video as well. Right here, where we set this to the factory default. So the way that Rebel has set it up. And then if you, over here, click revert, or you open this up and you click right here, this will set it back to whatever you have stored in that setting inside of preferences. Windows also has a pressure setting on a number of different machines. This will be different in different devices, HP, Wacom, Lenovo. A lot of them have them somewhere else. But right here, we have an option for pen pressure. This setting right here, adjusting to the left, will make it so that you have to uh, push a little bit harder in order to get a stroke which I think gives you better control over here means that when you're pushing a uh, very light it's going to do a full pressure response. So a quick demo of that here. I'm going to set this on pencil light. I can do faint and heavy with pressure. When I have it set to heavy the entire time with very, very light pressure is going to give a full line. And here there's no difference in this pen pressure setting and the other one, they mimic each other. So keep that in mind. This will go before this. So there's a layer order, system, computer settings, software settings, personal preferences. All right, hopefully that's clear. All right, and the last thing that we're going to cover in this video, here is the save settings in the brush creator. So let's go ahead and go back to our regular set up here and we'll bring this up. We have water where we want it. Uh, we have the brush creator on and now there are settings right here in the context menu. These settings are duplicated right over here on the left. Save changes as default, reset brush changes and save as a new brush preset. So over here, if you click on this one, so we have liner selected, we click here, it's going to duplicate it because we have a liner two somewhere else, this made liner three. Okay, we can delete them right here, remove brush preset, we can share right here, and we can duplicate right here. Same exact setting as this one up here. Okay, now if we make changes over here, if we want this to behave the way that it was before we made adjustments, click on reset brush changes, and this will bring it back. You can see the preview right here as well, kind of gives you an idea of what that should look like. If you make changes and you're like, this is, is actually how I want this to behave, then you can save those changes right here. Keyboard shortcut, control, shift, B. Okay, so those things, again, are very important to note. If you make a bunch of changes and you click the wrong one over here, it's going to reset it back to the, the default settings, either factory default if you haven't changed anything yet, or default based basically on your last save state. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to share here is you can copy a brush preset like we have this liner right here and paste it into, and I'm selecting my brushes here, and paste it into another media type. So here we have this watercolor brush, it's in the liners. Remember, this is like a different car with a different engine. So it's going to behave differently It'll have more options like dirty brush and multicolored brush, whereas there's not that option over here. You'll be playing with different dynamics. All right, you guys, that's it for the first video. If you have questions, put it in the comment section. In the next videos, we're going to be going through shape and grain, this top panel right here. 
We're going to do pressure, shape, grain, and canvas in videos with these titles so that you have an idea of how to find out what do these do in this section? What is this section? How does this work? And you have an easy way to find that information. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to this channel, like the video, and put your comments below.